Hi everyone, Amber here from So Majestic. Thank you so much for joining me. Today is Halloween, so happy Halloween if you celebrate. And on the channel, it is Owlween. I made this great puff quilt pillow using Owlween. That is the name of the fabric line by Urban Chicks for Moda Fabrics. Um, so I absolutely love how it came out. I did add ties to the front just for like decorative purposes. Uh, the back, I made it in envelope style pillowcase cover using Shannon Minky. So soft, it's my favorite. So I'm really excited to show you how I did this puff quilt pillow today. I am gonna look link um, Lo and Behold Stitchery, their website. She was one that I followed when I first learned how to make a puff quilt, um, but I adapted a few things that she does so I could use charm packs and use the charm squares. Uh, so I really hope you love this tutorial. Let me know if you make one. I would love for you to follow my channel. Um, yeah, and if you follow me on social media, definitely tag me if you make this. I'd love to see. Enjoy. So I'm going to be going over the materials that I will be using. Uh, so first thing is I had bought this charm pack. It is from Moda. It's Halloween by Urban Chicks. And I like using charm packs because I do not need to do any cutting, at least for the top squares of the puff quilt. And I'm going to be using 25 squares, so I've already picked out the 25 here that I would like to use. And these are all 5 inches. So you are going to need enough fabric to back each of those charm squares. Um, so I use some scrap fabrics that I have and these are all cut to four and a half inches. So they're a half inch shorter than my charm pack because we're going to be folding them um, and making like little pleats. So that is going to be used to make the front of my pillow. And in order to make the puffs, I have a bag of polyfill. Since we're making a pillow, I have a pillow form here. I believe this one is about 20 inches. And I love working with Minky. So the back of my pillowcase is gonna be this beautiful black Minky. And then I just have like a random scrap fabric here. I love using scraps. And this is gonna be hidden in the pillow um, but I'm going to use that to tie the puff squares too. Um, so in order to tie the puff squares, I'm going to be using this black embroidery thread. And I have purchased, um, these are upholstery needles. I find that with the puff quilt, sometimes it can be really hard to push the needle through. Uh, so these work really well because they are curved. Uh, for regular construction, I'm just using Guterman thread, polyester thread, and Schmetz universal needles. I'm going to use a 7010 to um, to make the initial um, squares for the puffs, but we'll probably bump it up when I'm sewing the whole pillow together. And then I have some quilting uh, safety pins here, and they're curved, so it's going to help when we are pinning everything together. So not pictured here, I'm gonna use like regular sewing things like snips, a ruler, rotary cutter. Um, you could also use scissors, just anything that we're gonna cut down the fabric. And I'm not giving specific measurements here because I'm not sure how wide I'm gonna need my backing yet. I'm not gonna cut my backing until I have pieced my entire front part of my pillow together. Okay, so I am at my machine and I'm sewing on a Singer 5528, just an older domestic. So nothing special, no fancy quilting machine. And I'm just using the 7010 needle and I have my stack of charm squares that I would like to use for the front of my puff pillow. So they're all pre-cut to five inches and I have my stack of um, the backing squares for these. So what we need to do is we need to attach these to create a pocket that we can stuff. So um, 
they are the our charm squares are a half inch bigger because we are going to be creating a pleat as we sew so it'll be something like this um so that way it will expand to allow us to stuff it uh, so I do not like put my pleats um, ahead of time I don't clip anything I literally do it all at the sewing machine and you can do this a variety of ways um, you could chain stitch it and go you know down one side of every every pocket or every square um, I prefer to do all three sides at once and I'm not sewing these in any particular order. I'm going to sew all my squares first and then align them and rearrange them to how I want. So what I'm doing is I have my stitch length set at two and a half and I am going to sew at a scant quarter inch. And I'm normally not good at scant quarter inch because or I'm not good at keeping it even. Um, but I want it scant because when I attach these blocks together, I'm going to use a full quarter inch seam allowance. So I want to make sure that I'm covering that it will cover this initial seam. Um, all right, so I backstitch at the beginning and the end just out of habit of being a bag maker and making sure it's secure. Um, so you can see that my square is hanging here a little bit longer. So what I do is I sew that scant quarter inch about an inch down and then I align my bottom corners together and I just take my pleat I just fold this up and create a pleat in the middle or a, about the middle I don't measure um, I guess you could do all the math and make it perfect but when you sew all these together you're not going to notice if it's not exactly center. Um, so I just create the pleat here, sew over it, and then I come down to my bottom. I put my needle in, then lift the presser foot to rotate it, set it back down, and I'm doing the same exact thing uh, for this second side. So I, I'm going to sew a little bit line up my bottom the top fabric will puff up come to my center pinch it and I always put the pleat facing towards me but you can do it whatever is most comfortable for you do one more stitch okay and now I am going to uh, do my third side and I'm going to go down a little bit line up my bottom and continue and I backstitch in the end as well and um, I'm going to cut this one off just so I can talk to you real quick but you could literally like now put the next one in and chain stitch all of them that way and if I am cutting it off, I always cut my threads so I don't have to worry about that later. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is we are going to be stuffing our pockets from the top. So if you have directional fabric, you want to make sure that you're leaving the top open. So my owls, they are, they go both ways. So this is perfect. I'm going to be able to stuff it here. Um, and then you can see like the rest of these, I don't believe any of them are really directional at all. Maybe the ghost one, I might want to do a certain way. Um, but yeah, if you do have directional, you want to make sure you're leaving the top open. And how I, I kind of figure that is if I did have directional, I would make sure that it's orientated the correct way. So again, now I'm gonna just move on to my second block. And keep working. Again, lining up the bottom. Uh, now my, the charm pack is, you know, like a fancy quilting cotton. It's by Moda. Um, but you can use any 
fabric. Like, don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money on quilting fabric from a quilting store. These scraps are actually left over from um, some fat quarters that I had that are Walmart fabric. And if you look in the on my social media, I have made a Tula Pink puff quilt. And the whole backing for the backing is just um, inexpensive fabrics. So to me, it's more important to enjoy what you are making. And I do not like waste. So for me to be able to use up some scrap fabrics is even better. Okay, as you can see, here's my second one. And I'm cutting this off so I can show you again. Um, so like I said, all the pleats, I always face it towards me. And then that kind of keeps it uniform three sides and I'm just gonna stack these up as I go and sew all of these pockets separately. So I'm not going to, um, you know, sew all of them on camera. I'll do a time lapse for a few more. And in my stack, I'm planning to do 25. So to have five rows of five uh, puffs each. So once you have sewn all your squares into little pockets, you should have all three sides sewn with the top open. We, our next step is that we are gonna put them into rows before we stuff them. So I have laid out mine in the order that I have wanted. I have them laid out on my floor. Um, I suggest you mix and match, play around. Once you have your layout, we are going to group them by rows. Uh, so our next step is we are going to sew them together at a quarter inch seam allowance. So how I get my rows in order is I start on the left hand side and I just stack them. So when I take to this to the machine, I know my top one goes to the left the green one will be sewn to the right, black one sewn to the right of the green, then the burgundy, and then the gray. So I stack them up and then I take a little sticky note and I know this is my fifth row. So I'm going to label it number five. I know that's my bottom row. So I'm going to repeat the same exact thing for my fourth row and then three two one and this is really important because you want to make sure that after sorting all these that you have them in the correct order that you want you don't want them getting mixed up as we are stitching them all together So now I have all my stacks near my machine and I'm going to start with row one and I'm not going to get rid of this because I'm still going to label my rows once they are sewn together. So I'm going to set this down and now I will pick up the first one that's going on the left. My second one is going to the right and I am going to line them up. They should match up perfectly and I'm going to stitch at a full quarter inch seam allowance. And I do back stitch at the beginning and the end um, just to make sure that they are secure. And I am doing that full quarter inch because you can see that full quarter inch is blocking or it's gonna hide our scant where we created the pocket in the seam allowance. So when this opens, 
you are not going to see any of our stitching from when we were building the pocket. And you can see that my um, fold here matches like almost perfectly. And that was just by eyeballing it. So when it's all together, it's going to look great. You don't need to worry about this and exact measurements. So now that I've opened this up, now I grab my next one. It's also going to the right. And again, sewing at that full quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, opening that. My fourth one to the right. You can clip these together if it's helpful. Um, I'm just, I just hold them in place. The nice thing about a puff quilt, um, due to its nature of being puffy, it does hide imperfections. Okay, and then my last one in this row, again, adding it to the right hand side. make sure I trim all my threads as I'm going. So now if I open this up, you'll see that I have my first row. All five blocks are stitched together. So I'm just gonna fold this in half to save space. I'm gonna put my row number one label and then I'm just gonna set it to the side and I'm gonna repeat the same exact process for row two attaching it to the right using the full quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so now we are going to start stuffing our rows and attaching them together, which um, I do at the same time. I don't stuff all five rows and then try to fill them because then it's so puffy and it's harder to sew. Uh, and we are building our pillow, or if you're doing a quilt, you're building it from the bottom up. So here you can see I'm starting with row five and I'm going to start putting some polyfill in and I just kind of like like a handful and I stuff it in and I see how puffy it is and to me that looks pretty good I don't want it too filled where it's like right up to the top and I'm pinching and I really can't secure it um, so you want to see you want to do it whatever way looks pleasing to you so I think that's pretty good and I just follow this process for all my puffs in the row that I'm working on so in this case only row five and what I do is I add all the, the stuffing into all five and then I'm gonna look at it and see like does any of them look overstuffed compared to the others or understuffed I want them to appear pretty equal. That one I definitely felt that I grabbed a smaller amount, so I'll stuff some in there now. And I'm using um, polyfill for this one, but I've also used natural cotton Stuffing, that's what I used for my Tula Pink Puff Quilt, and it works just as well. Um, this I had left over from a project in my classroom, so that's what it's becoming now, stuffing. 
All right, so now I'm looking at all my rows and, or all my squares in row five, and they seem to be pretty evenly stuffed. So I'm going to move this out of the way of my sewing machine. And before we attach the row on it, I'm gonna do a uh, basting stitch at the scant quarter inch again, or you could do an eighth. You don't wanna do the full quarter because now we're going to close up the top and we need to create that little um, pleat. So just like when we sewed our squares when they were empty and we started and pleated it in the middle and kept going, we're gonna follow that same process. So again, I start by just lining it up under my sewing machine, under my presser foot. And this is where it's gonna start to be a little bit more difficult because with the puff, you're gonna have to squish it and maneuver. Okay, so I backstitch at the beginning. And now as we're sewing, you're gonna have to pay attention because we have attached these seams here. So for this one, I'm gonna put all the seams pressed towards me. And we're gonna have to rotate that on the next row so our seams nest together. So in this one, I'm just making sure that when I get to the seam, it is creased towards me. Okay. So again, I'm sewing about an inch. I'm holding where the seam is in my right hand and then creating the pleat with my left and I'm continuing to sew down and I'm using both hands to align up the edge you could clip it if you want I just find it easier to align it as I go so again I'm back into the center almost to the center creating that pleat And you are just continuing this for your entire row. Okay, so now you can see I have my bottom row, row five, and it's completely sealed along the top. So now I am grabbing my row four, and I am going to sew this together using my full quarter inch seam allowance. So we want it to look like this. So now I actually am going to use clips. So I'm gonna put them right sides together and I don't stuff this first. It makes it easier to sew without it being stuffed. And I am going to start at the seams. So I'm aligning them here, matching them up in the middle. And our bottom one, I had sewn the seams towards me. So I'm making sure they nest. So now all my seams on row four are going to the left because in row five underneath that they are to the right. So that way they will nest perfectly together and it won't be quite as bulky as if they were going in the same direction. And let me add I'm gonna add a clip to the beginning and the end. And you want to make sure that this is where they start to um, move a little bit and um, because of the bulk, you can see here. So when I'm sewing, I wanna make sure that I am lining up the edges, that I am catching all of it. So I'm taking this to my machine 
and I'm going to sew at the full quarter inch seam allowance. And again, I'm back stitching the beginning and the end just to secure it. So I put a couple stitches in and now I'm making sure that my edges are aligned because with the puff, with the polyfill, sometimes they want to move away. And I'm making sure that my seam allowances as I'm sewing stay in the proper direction. So like my presser foot just wanted to push this one towards me. So I am being very mindful that they are sewed in opposite directions. It's not a huge deal if they get sewed in the opposite direction. Um, it just makes it more bulky and maybe a little bit more difficult when it comes to tying it. Uh, because it's a puff quilt, you won't really notice the bump. And then you, you also might have a, a stiletto, this little point that you could also use. I know I get my fingers really close sometimes. So it's probably safer to use a stiletto at some points. Okay, I backstitched at the end here, trimming my threads. So now you can see that when I fold this open, I have my row five on the bottom, the four above, and they are all aligned. And if you look on the back, you can see that my seams are going in opposite ways. And this can kind of start looking chaotic and messy, um, but don't worry about how the back looks right now. So now that these are sewn together, I am going to take my um, polyfill, stuff my fourth row, baste it close, and then continue with row three, just like we did here. Okay, so before I move on to stuffing my row four, you may have noticed that this green block here and the orange one are, row are flipped. Um, I had made a mistake sewing the row, so I have just rotated them that way I don't have the same color. Um, so now I am going to stuff my row four the same way I did for row five and I'm going to baste it close but when I'm basting there's two things I'm paying attention to. First I am creating the pleat in the middle but also now we have seams for our row five and row four so we want to make sure that seam is going in the same direction. Um, we don't want them, you know, the bottom one here is pointing to the left. I don't want my top going to the right. So you want to make sure that as you're basting, you're also basting your seams to the correct direction. So I'm going to do that on time lapse. Okay, so now I have row four stuffed and attached to row five. I've basted it closed, made sure that I have the folds here. So now we are going to attach our row three to the top of row four, and we are going to do it the same exact way we attached row five to row four. Uh, so I am making sure that I am lining up my squares and making sure that my seam allowances are going to be nested. So in this case, they are facing to the right. Yes, because the bottom one was to the left. So now it should be to the right. So you just, something to be mindful of. Sometimes my presser foot moves them like I said before, it's not a huge deal because the bulk um, or the puff hides that bulkiness, but it does make it easier. 
Okay, and then we are gonna take it to our machine and sew the full quarter inch seam allowance. So now we have our row three attached to rows four and five, and we are gonna repeat the same exact process um, to stuff them, attach row two, and then row one. my rows added the stuffing and basted the top row closed so on the back it looks like this which if you wanted to just do your pillowcase and you know sew the back now we could but I don't want this showing even though it's hidden by the um, it will be hidden by the backing of the pillow um, so what I'm going to do is if we were making this as a quilt, we would add batting and then our backing fabric. So I'm not going to add batting because this is just a pillow and it's going to be fluffy anyway. So I don't think it's needed. And my other scrap of fabric was not big enough. So I've grabbed another um, scrap of fabric that is wide wide enough a little bit extra on all sides and the step that I'm going to be doing would be like as if we were tying our quilt together so using um, the embroidery thread this pillow size I honestly don't think we even need it I just want to do it more for like aesthetics so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pin every other block just to hold my backing fabric in place. And I have my backing fabric wrong side up, so wrong sides are together. That way when we build our pillowcase and if you happen to look inside, you're gonna see this blue fabric. You're not going to see the backs of all these squares. And it plus it hides like um, the, the cotton woven I cut myself. You could see that it is fraying um, so it will hide any of that inside. Uh, so next I'm just going to clip or, or pin with my curved quilting pins. So you can see here the bottom has um, a dip and it just makes it easy for you to come through on one side and come up on the other. And I'm just pinning each one in place. It's going to help me as I'm going through and uh, doing the embroidery. I'm tying it off. And definitely do this on a hard surface. I'm just using a table in my crafting room that is from Ikea. Like it's nothing special. So I'm not like 
digging into wood or anything, or you could put your cutting mat underneath as you're doing this. So that way you are not gouging uh, a nice piece of furniture or anything or the floor wherever you may be working on this. So you can see I'm just holding, putting a couple just to hold it in place and I'm gonna continue doing the rest. Okay, so I have put my curved safety pins skipping um, every other block because I'm going to tie every other then remove my safety pins and tie the rest. Um, so I am using some embroidery thread and I'm just gonna open up this whole thing. And I, I don't make it too long. There's different techniques to doing this, but I just make it, um, I don't know, this is probably about a foot, maybe a little bit longer and gives me enough to work with and tie off. And I'll add as I need. Um, so and now in order to tie these, I am just like, I like everything to look the same. So I'm going to tie every block. And what I found is if I'm using this embroidery thread, I bought these curved upholstery needles. And you can see they have like a very large eye. I bought a whole bunch of needles that did not work for this. So I just thread it through and I'm not pulling um, any the strings apart as if I were doing like a cross stitch or embroidery. I'm using the all six strands that are there. And why I'm doing two is because I'm going to make an X when I tie these. I don't want it just coming through one side. I want it through both. And this is just like a preference. You literally could just do one side. So whatever works for you. So I, instead of doing one at a time, I found it uh, much easier to use two. So I start in one corner here. So I'm going to start in this black square, go down. And this is where like it might help to have a thimble you might be pushing through a lot of layers especially if that is the side that your seam allowance is pressed towards so then i go all the way through and i come up the other side and the curved needle really helps with that rocking motion of pulling it through so then i pull it not all the way through because i want to tie these so i leave um I don't know, that's probably about three inches hanging off. And now I'm going to do it through the other way, through this pink and then into the orange. And this side is not as difficult because I can feel that my seam allowances are not pressed that way. And again, I'm pulling it through to about the same length. And I am trimming and then I take all four pieces and I just knot it. Just, I usually go about three times just to make sure it's secure. And I don't pull it like super tight. There's a little bit of wiggle room here and that's just because I don't want it so tight that it's causing friction with the puffs and then I do not like long tails so I trim them down and now that is tied here and as you use it they'll you know fray apart a little bit more look more almost like a pom-pom so I'm continuing that process for every single intersection of my puffs and like I said I don't really think that this is needed for the pillow. You could always mis machine stitch if you wanted, just like a couple, um, like tacking it back and forth to hold it together. Um, yeah, it's really about preference, but if you are doing a large quilt, then you definitely need to tie it because that's what's going to support your 
your backing one and hold it together. So I'm gonna do one more before I time lapse it because I, I wanna show you what it looks like from the back side. And like I made a Tula pink puff quilt and I rotated all my colors. I made them match. For this one, I'm just doing black throughout because I feel like the black ties together um, all the different prints in this puff pillow. Okay, I'm gonna cut it to my preference. And um, you could even like do this and then like loop them all through and then tie them all at once. Um, but what I did want to show you is on the back. So now you can see on the back I have the two pins here, the safety pins holding. And then it's kind of hard to see because it's black thread on navy blue. Um, but they come through and they're tied. So even though I'm doing a pillowcase and I'm going to have like an envelope opening, um, if you look inside, this is what you're going to see. So I'm going to continue this process for all the intersections that I don't have safety pinned, and then I'm going to remove the safety pins and do it for the rest. Tying off between all my puffs and if you look at the back you can see I have four rows of four coming through. So my next step is you'll notice that our edges are not um, sewn down. So I am going to attach the rest of my puff quilt all along all four edges by sewing down around all four sides and I'm just doing this as a basting stitch to hold it in place so we can put the back on of our pillowcase to make the envelope which I'm going to use that minky for. I'm not going to trim my fabric down yet. Um, you can if it makes it easier for you. I'm debating if I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna hold it and sew. Um, you could also put pins to really like align it and make it straight. But I think I'm just gonna base down all four edges and then I'm gonna trim it afterwards. Basted around all four sides and one of the reasons I didn't want to trim the fabric first is because this has some stretch due to the nature of the puffs coming together. Um, so I knew that it might pull the backing in different ways. So now that I have sewn and basted all four sides, I'm going to trim and I'm using pinking shears uh, to, so that way it will keep my fabric from fraying or mostly fraying. I'm not really cutting my puffs. Um, if anything, just a tiny, tiny bit to try to my um, charm squares already were cut with pinking shears, 
so they won't fray but like how you can see the backing fabric that I used did so I am trimming a tiny bit of that to try to keep it from fraying more Alright, so I have trimmed all my edges with my pinking shears. Um, so now if you look on the back, we have this nice solid blue. And it's not going to be perfectly smooth because, like I said, the way that the puffs come together, there's some stretch. Uh, so now we need to figure out how big of our backing for the pillowcase we need. And I'm going to make a envelope style so the pillow can slip in. So first I'm going to measure how big my puff quilt or puff quilt pillow. So it's about 19 inches wide. Theoretically, it's the same amount. It should be about 19 by 19. All right, so I'm going to do the math to figure out. I know that my minky is going to be 19 inches wide, but I'm going to need to cut two pieces to have them overlap. Okay, so I am cutting my minky for the envelope closure in the back. And I know that I need it 19 inches wide and 17 inches tall. I've already cut one piece that is 19 inches wide and 10 inches tall. And this is so that way, um, if you add that up, that's 20, yeah, 27 inches. And we know our pillows only 19 inches tall, but I want these minky pieces to overlap. So first I am going to make this um, 17 inches tall and I'm actually using a cutting mat underneath and it has the inches. So I have just lined up my minky nicely with the edges and I have found the 17 inch mark over here and I've lined it up all the way across. So I'm just using a ruler and rotary cutter to do that. All right, and if you're cutting minky, like some people wear a mask, like it sheds like crazy. And it can be kind of a pain to sew, but it's one of my favorite materials. I love how it feels as, as a blanket. And to me, it's worth it. Okay, so now I have this 17 inches tall. I need it 19 inches wide. I just got to find my measurement over here. Which is right here. And I'm cutting on my floor. I don't have a table large enough to do this um so i just make it work for me all right so now this is my second piece of minky you can see it was stored with other scraps i'm gonna have to lint roll it so now that i have my minky cut out uh, i am gonna hem the edge of um the top edge of the shorter one and the bottom edge of the long one because they are going to overlap for the back of the pillow. And if I was using just like a regular, um, like cotton or something that's not as fluffy, I would do about a half an inch fold over for the hem. Um, but because this is so fluffy, I am gonna do three quarters of an inch. So I'm just, going to try to mark that as best I can with some chalk and then I'm going to take it to the machine and I am going to fold it over and I'm I'm folding it over three quarters but I'm going to stitch it at about a half an inch and I'm going to mark the same for the larger piece as well all right so now I'm at my machine I have it clipped and folded back the three quarters of an inch. Um, so I am going to hem it 
with a top stitch length and I am going to do a half inch seam allowance. And that's because the minky is so fluffy that sometimes it's hard to tell if it's really at a half an inch. And this will just uh, ensure that I'm catching it instead of like a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch. And minky can be slippery to sew if you have a walking foot that helps. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's like puffed up over my line. Um, so I'm just trying to be as consistent as possible. And this is going to be hidden inside the, um, or the backside is going to be hidden inside the pillow. So it's not a huge deal if it's not perfectly straight. And I've been using um, black thread all along and this minky is so puffy that it's really going to hide my stitch line as well. So if you are using minky and you use a um, thread that blends in, like you can barely even see the line at all. And then I'm just slipped it to make sure that I've caught the entire back side. I'm going to do that again for the next piece. All right, so I finished hemming my minky and now it is time to build our pillowcase. So I'm going to take my front cover, which is their puff quilt, and I want it so the top is towards the top, right sides facing up. So if you have directional print, make sure you have it facing the correct way and then now we are going to put our puff quilt top with our minky right sides together so i'm going to start with my larger piece of minky and i'm putting it the fluffy side facing down and this is because i want the fold at the bottom of my quilt uh, so I am going to align the three edges. Actually, I'm going to start in the corner. It'll be easier that way. And I am going to clip all three sides, right sides together. And like I said, with Minky, it's super fluffy. So make sure you're taking your time and really lining it up. You can use as many clips as you need. And now when we flip this right sides out, um, this seam you are going to see. So I'm gonna sew it on my regular sewing machine, but sometimes I do minky blankets on my serger. I'm wondering if I could even serge that to have a, like a more of a finished seam on the inside. start there. I'm just going to flip it so I can reach it easier. Okay, so once you have your top pinned, you are going to do the same exact thing for the bottom. You are it's going to overlap because that's creating our envelope. So we want our hem side facing up and we want to pin the rest of the sides or clips. Making sure you're taking your time, catching everything. So here you're gonna have two layers of minky plus your puff quilt. All right, so I have it completely clipped all the way around. 
I am going to take it to my machine now and I am going to sew at a 3 8 seam allowance. I know between the rest that we did the quarter inch to hide our basting seams for the puffs, um, but again, being that it's minky, I am gonna do a little bit larger just to make sure I catch it all the way around. Um, I am going to sew it on my machine with the minky side facing down, I think, unless you have a walking foot. I'm afraid that without the walking foot that this um, will slip too much. So I think it's better near my feed dogs. And I'm just gonna pay attention to when I get to this um, where it overlaps that it doesn't get folded back or anything. And I'm just gonna use a regular stitch length and I probably am gonna bump my needle up to an 80-12 or 90-14, uh, especially because we are going through quite a bit of layers on the outside. All right, so I'm back at my machine. I did increase my needle to a 90-14. I'm using a seam guide just to help me make sure that I am going um, as far enough over that I need. And I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. And I'm just going to now take my time and I'm making sure I'm pulling my pins out at the last minute and I'm making sure as I'm going that all the layers are being caught. Now when you get to the corner, if you want to backstitch a little bit to give it um, some reinforcement, and then I put the needle down and lift my presser foot and turn my entire project and then put my presser foot back down and then continue going. And that needle down is important so your layers do not shift on you because if there's any fabric that is going to move on you, it will definitely be minky. All right, and I'm just looking to see where I'm coming up on the um, overlap on the back side. So right as I get to this orange clip, I want to make sure that it's catching where I have the minky overlapped. And I'm going to sew a little bit more and just double check that. All right, it caught on the back, so I'm good. And I'm gonna continue all the way around. All right, so I just finished sewing all the way around. Um, I believe like just by looking at the back, I think I have caught all the layers. Um, but before I even leave my sewing machine, I am going to turn it because I want to make sure that I definitely caught them all. So I'm going to flip it to the minky side where it overlaps and I am just going to turn it right sides facing out. And I'm going to stick my hands in and I'm gonna poke out all the corners, but I'm also going to run my hand along all the seams, because if I made a mistake and I didn't catch the layers, my fingers are gonna come through. But I'm gonna find the hole. So it serves two purposes. It's poking everything out and checking to make sure that everything sewed correctly. All right, and I definitely think it did. So here's the front, and that was the back. And now we're gonna add our pillow insert. All right, so we just finished sewing on the back, attaching it and turning it right sides out. Uh, so this is our front. Our back is our minky with the envelope pocket here. And if you look in, you don't see any of the messiness of the backs of the squares. 
The seam inside is raw edged. You could definitely bind that if you want, but that is in the corners or along the edges, so I'm not worried. So our last step is adding our pillow. You can see it puffs out, but with this envelope, it overlaps and creates a nice seam and the minky hides it so well. And you flip it over and you have this gorgeous pillow. I'll have to take a picture on my couch and show you. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you loved this tutorial. I am so excited to snuggle up with this pillow on my couch. I have plans to make many more. Um, I'd love if you would subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, and let me know for sure if you make one of your own. Definitely tag me on social media. See you later.